Welcome to I Lecture Online. In this particular example, or problem I should say, it's not an example, a problem from the JEE main test dealing with physics. Well, I like this one. This is actually a really interesting problem. So let's read it together and I'll show you why I think this is interesting. A small bob tied to one end of a thin string of length one meter is describing a vertical circle so that the maximum and minimum tension in the string are in the ratio of five to one. The velocity of the bob at the highest position is, and we have to take g as 10 meters per second squared, which is nice because 9.8 is harder to deal with, especially without a calculator. So let's make a drawing of the situation, see what we're dealing with here. So we have a bob that's going around in a vertical circle. So sometimes the bob is at the top and sometimes the bob is at the bottom. There's a center, it's attached to a string. So either it's like this or it could be like this. Now. Let's say that this is tension 1, and let's say that this is tension 2 in this position. Now, at this point, notice that the bob will have uh, what we call centrifugal force. Now, here's something that I like to work with. I like to work with centrifugal force rather than centripetal force because it makes it easier to visualize things. Now, centrifugal force is a fictitious force. It's what you feel when you tend to go around in a circle, let's say you're driving a car pretty fast and all of a sudden the driver makes a sharp left turn, it feels like you're being pushed to the right. But all you're doing is simply following Newton's first law, trying to go straight, the car is going this way, so you feel like you're being pushed to the right. That's that fictitious centrifugal force. So I'm going to use that to help us work things out. So first of all, when we take the position at the top, we have what we call the centrifugal force, and I'll put it in brackets like that because that way you realize it's not a real force but it has the same equation mv squared over r and then we have the mg this way plus we have the tension and so in this case you can see that since gravity is assisting the tension we can then say that tension 1 is equal to mv squared at the top so I'll put t for the top divided by um, r minus mg. But then when it comes to the bottom, notice that both the centrifugal force, that fictitious force, F sub c, centrifugal force, equals mv squared over r, and the weight of the object, mg, both point downwards. So in this case, the tension at the bottom is equal to uh, mv at the bottom squared over r plus mg. So it's greater at the bottom than at the top. So when we're talking about the relative um, ratio, that would be t at, the top, t at the bottom divided by t at the top. So basically, t bottom related to t at the top. And so instead of two, maybe I'll call it bottom, and instead of one, I'll call it top. So that way you can see that um, that would be t at the top and t at the bottom like this. Okay. The next thing we have to realize is the velocity is going to change because notice when the object is at the top, it's gained potential energy. When it's at the bottom, it's converted that potential energy back into kinetic energy. So we're going to use the energy conservation equation where um, energy at the top is equal to energy at the bottom. So the sum of all the energies need to add up. So in this case, we can say that the kinetic energy at the top plus the potential energy at the top equals the kinetic energy at the bottom. We're going to assume that this is our reference height so that there's no potential energy at the bottom. We'll just call that zero. So that means that one half mv at the top squared plus mgh is equal to one half mv at the bottom squared. So now let's simplify that equation a little bit. First of all, we have an m everywhere that cancels out. g is 10, h would be twice the radius, right? So h would be twice the radius, and the radius is 1, so that would be 2. So we end up with uh, 1 half v top squared plus 10 times 2, which is 20, equals 1 half v bottom squared. And then we multiply everything by 2 to get rid of those halves, so we have v top squared plus 40 equals v bottom squared. 
All right, so now we have a relationship between V at the top and V at the bottom. So now I think we're ready to do that ratio, the 5 to 1 ratio. So now we can say that T2 or T top, actually I want bottom, right? So T bottom over T top, which is 5 to 1, which is equal to, now we can see that the tension at the top is going to be, or at the bottom, is going to be mv squared, at the bottom squared, divided by the radius, plus mg, and in the denominator we have mvb uh, top squared, because now we're at the top, top squared over the radius, and instead of plus it's going to be minus mg. Mm. Which T right here? Yeah. Like that? Yes. Okay, and the two right there? Okay, very nice. Now, simplifying things a little bit because we know that R is equal to 1. And we can cancel all the M's everywhere, right? So we can cancel all the M's. And R is 1. So we can say that 5 to 1 is equal to V bottom squared plus 10 over v top squared minus 10. And then notice we have a relationship between v top and v bottom right here. So v bottom squared is really v top plus 40. So we r is equal to 1. Oh, one. Right? So we can get rid of the r. Mm -hmm. So now we have 5 over 1 is equal to v bottom squared is the same as v top squared plus 40 plus 10 divided by v top square minus 10. And now we can cross multiply and solve for v top. So now when we cross multiply, we have 5 v top square minus 50, because we're multiplying both, equals v top square plus 50. So we bring this over here and that over there. Now we have 5 minus 1, or 4 v top square is equal to 100 or v top square is equal to 25, which finally means that v top is equal to the square root of 25, or 5 meters per second. And that's the answer. We're looking for the velocity at the highest position, v top, and so we know that that is going to be 5 meters per second. I really like this problem. It does requires several things that you need to be aware of. First of all, we need to be able to make a drawing and realize that the tension at the top is going to be equal to the centripetal force minus the weight, the centripetal force plus the weight. Actually, I like to call it the centrifugal force because visually you can see it, how it works out. Then we need to use the energy conservation equation to realize the relationship between the velocity at the top and the velocity at the bottom. And then we need to take the ratio and say that the the tension at the bottom versus the tension at the top, which is a 5 to 1 ratio, can then be replaced when we put those two equations in here. We solve them simultaneously, but we need to eliminate one of them by using this relationship to find the solution for one, in this case, velocity at the top. And that is how it's done. And there's no shortcut method to this one because you have no possible answers to choose from. You just have to yes. work it out. And guessing, in this case, is not a good thing to do. 